Friday morning, everybody. I hope you're looking forward to being with us in worship this Sunday. Also, inviting someone to come with you always, every week. Invite someone to church with you for the Lord's Day. We are starting uh, Galatians chapter 1 today in our Bible reading plan and devotion. The next two weeks, we'll look at Galatians and Colossians. And, and after that, we'll return to the Old Testament and spend a few weeks looking at First and Second Samuel in the Old Testament. So today, Galatians chapter uh, 1. Um, and what I wrote in the top of my journal uh, after reading this chapter is that the gospel cannot be compromised. There, that God will not, not accept us compromising the true gospel, that salvation is by faith alone um, through a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ who made atonement for us on the cross. We can't compromise the gospel. Galatians is one of Paul's earlier letters, maybe his earliest. And uh, it's written to a group of churches that he had started on his first missionary journey. And you read about it in Acts chapter 14 and 15. He traveled through an area that was known by the Roman, uh, it was a province of the Roman Empire known as Galatia. Today it would be in south central Turkey. And uh, some of the towns that he visited, he and Barnabas and started churches in there in Galatia, south central Turkey, were uh, places like uh, uh, Pisidia, Derby, Lystra, uh, Lacania, Iconium, and so on. And uh, so Paul has finished that journey and he's made his way back to what, what was his sending church in Antioch in Syria. Um, and he discovers that there were some problems in those churches. There, there, there were some Christian Jews, in other words, people who were Jews that became believers in Jesus, became Christians, part of the church in Jerusalem. And uh, they had a hard time accepting the idea, the belief, that someone could be a true follower of Christ without also following some of the traditions of Judaism, especially the tradition of circumcision. These are referred to in the Bible and in, in our Christian writings as the Judaizers. And they would often go to churches that Paul had planted, usually after he had left, sometimes while he was there, um, and stir up trouble by, by teaching this false teaching. Paul calls it a false gospel. They were adding to the gospel. Paul, and you know, the, the Bible teaches that salvation is through faith and faith alone uh, in Jesus. Now, faith involves surrender and commitment and obedience, but it's through faith. It's not through works. And they were coming behind and saying, no, no, no. Now, you know, you have to be circumcised as well. You have to follow some of these Jewish traditions. And it was creating confusion in the churches. It was damaging the faith of some believers. And, and some were, were either they're just walking away from the faith or they were saying, okay, uh, and, and they moved toward a works-based salvation. So that's what Paul is dealing with when he writes this letter. It's, it's, a, it's a letter that would be sent to and read in the different churches. So it wasn't just to one of those churches. It was to all of those churches in Galatia, the ones I mentioned a moment ago. And I want you to notice how, how clear and stern, both, okay, how clear and forceful Paul is in saying this is a false gospel. If you add anything to salvation by faith, it is a false gospel. And he uses clear, harsh terms to condemn it. Look with me in verses 6 and following. Okay, let's just look at the terms he uses. He says, I am amazed that you are so quickly deserting him. He's saying when you add works to faith as the way of salvation, you are in reality deserting Jesus. Because if it's by works, then you earn it. That's not how that's not that's not how, how this thing, that's not how this thing uh, works, so to speak. It's through faith and faith alone. You're deserting Jesus, this false gospel, who called you by the grace of Christ. You're deserting him for a different gospel. If you add circumcision or baptism or any deed or works to faith for salvation, you are deserting Jesus, and that is a different gospel. It's not Jesus' gospel. Verse 7, which is really not another. Um, only there are some 
who are disturbing you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. In other words, they're still talking about Jesus and the cross, but they're adding to it. So it kind of sounds like it's not something different, even though it is. That's what makes it kind of attractive and confusing. What they're really doing is distorting, twisting, distorting the gospel of Jesus Christ. Verse 8. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to what we have preached to you, he is to be a curse. He said, if anybody comes to you and preaches anything other than salvation through true faith in Jesus, faith plus works, they are preaching a gospel that is contrary to Jesus' gospel, and that person, even if they're an angel, is to be accursed. Strong language. Verse 9. As we have said before, so I say again now, if any man is preaching to you a gospel contrary to what you have received, he is to be accursed. He repeats himself again. I mean, he drives the point. He drives the point home. That's why I wrote in my journal, there's absolutely no room for compromising the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, a couple of devotional thoughts, things that you know also just kind of spoke to my heart in addition to this theological teaching in verses 6 through 9. Here's the first one. Look at verse 10. Paul says, For am I now seeking the favor of men or of God? Or am I striving to please men? In other words, if I just wanted to be popular, I'd, I'd just preach whatever you all liked, whatever you responded to, but that's not what I'm doing. I'm going to preach the truth. In the middle of verse 10, he says, if I were still trying to please men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. And when I read that, I thought, wow. I had to choose, am I going to be a servant of Jesus or someone who's always worried about what other people think? That if, that if I'm spending my energy and my thoughts and making decisions on the basis of people liking me, trying to please people, get approval, be accepted, all of that, it means I am not a burnt bond servant of Jesus. I am not surrendered to Jesus. I am not obeying and serving Jesus. That being a bond servant to Jesus means I cannot be a slave to the opinions and, of, uh, and the approval of other people. And I thought, wow. No, it's not just children and teenagers who struggle with that. We as adults do too, don't we? Whose approval do you want most? Is it Jesus or somebody else? Second devotional thought is found in verses 15 and 16. He says, but when God, this is Paul writing, but when God who had set me apart, Paul referring to himself, set me apart even from my mother's womb, and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him preached Jesus among uh, the Gentiles. When I read that, I thought about Jeremiah in the Old Testament, the prophet. Uh, in Jeremiah uh, chapter 1, in verse 5, God says to Jeremiah when he called him to be a prophet, he said, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. And I got to thinking about what? what God said to Jeremiah and what Paul says here about how God um, set me apart even from my mother's womb and called me that, that even before we are born, God has a plan for us. You are not an accident. God has a plan for you. God had that plan for you before you took your first breath. Before your mother held you in her arms the first time. Before you learned to walk, learned to speak, learned to run. Before you learned to read. Before you, when you were in your mother's womb, God had a plan for your life. Are you following him? And living out the plan he has for you? So in summation, hey, let's follow God's plan for our lives. Let's seek to please Him and not people. Let's, let's stay true to the gospel of salvation through faith in Jesus and never ever for any reason in any way compromise it. And that will be a life well lived which gains the Look forward to 
being with you Monday as we look at chapter 2 of Galatians. And then Sunday morning, hey, join us for worship. God bless you. Have a great weekend.